Over the last three years, Georgia football fans have grown accustomed to seeing Rennie Curran making plays on the football field. And while they may be used to seeing him in that familiar double red, all you Bulldog fans will have to get used to rooting for him in a very unfamiliar blue and white. And while you may miss seeing last year's SEC leader in tackles bringing down the opponent between the hedges, you'll be glad to know he's adjusting to life as a rookie in the National Football League. Curran starts each day off the same, praying over the phone with his mom. I love you. Bye. At rookie camp, Curran describes his days as that of a full-time job. You know, we get in about 7 o'clock, around 7 o'clock, get breakfast. You know, they already have food here for us, which is pretty good. And um, we get that in, and then we're in the weight room if we're lifting weights, or we're on the, in uh, the film room, you know, having a meeting with the coaches and everything by about 7.30 to 8 o'clock. And then, uh, you know, if we're having practice, then we're on the field by like 9.45. You know, and then done by, you know, 12, 1. And then once you're done, you know, you either have a workout or if you're a rookie like me, you might have a meeting with a coach, you know, just to help you out mentally. Mm -hmm. Or after that, you're done for the day. So it's, it's just like coming in for a job, you know, like a 9 to 5 or something. You know, you get your work in, you do everything you got to do, and then you're out, you're done for the day. Curran describes few differences from college and pro ball. Um, definitely in the NFL, it's a, it's a lot more details, a lot more mental. You know, at the same time, it's, it's football. You know, a lot of a lot of things are the same. You know, it's, in terms of what I did at Georgia, as far, as far as our technique, but the terminology might be a little bit different. Has it hit you yet? If so, that now this is a business. Yeah, a little bit, you know. But around here, you know, I feel like I'm one, in one of the greatest programs. You know, because you don't really see that business side. At least I haven't yet. You know, all the guys really have fun. You know, they're in there making mixtapes and uh, rap albums about each other, you know, dissing each other. And uh, <laughs> um, the coaches, you know, really care, I feel like care about you as a player, you know, and, and as a person, you know. And, and so just come, coming here, coming to work, you know, it just feels like any, any other day, you know, like just like playing football like I was 10 or something. As far as his starting days at Georgia and now being third string on the Tennessee roster, Curran says he's staying positive. Mentally, uh, I'm staying positive. You know, it was the same thing at Georgia. I came in as a freshman. And I was, you know, third string down there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing after another happened, you know, injury or a guy made a mistake. And, mm -hmm. you know, my opportunity came and I was able to start, you know, the fifth game of the year, my freshman year against Florida. You know, and so uh, I just, that that's the whole situation helped me realize, you know, that no matter what situation you're in, you got to train like, as if you were a starter. You know, because you never know when that opportunity or that break will come. Though only 21, Curran says the early foundation set by his family will help keep him grounded. Having a strong family and having good people around me and everything that I've been through at, you know, at um, my high school, Brookwood and at the UGA, you know, it, all of this prepared me for this, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really helped me strong, set a strong foundation where, you know, the things that might come my way, the material things or, you know, having people that, that aren't, you know, is grounded around me, you know, I feel like I'll be able to stand strong because I remember where I come from and, you know, I have to keep those things in perspective. So I'm just excited about the opportunity to be here and just, you know, looking forward to everything. And if you follow Rennie Curran's tweets, he tells you what he's doing to memorize the playbook. You know, I'm uh, making flashcards, you know, with little, you know, keywords or anything that'll help me remember a play, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just looking at that film or sometimes I'll go out with the rest of the rookies and we'll set up little cans and, you know, go over uh, plays and, you know, every, everything that we can do to, to help us mentally and, um, you know, physically. We're, we're doing that. We're staying in the weight room. You know, that's important as well as just keeping, staying healthy and staying strong, you know, because it's going to be a long season. How confident do you feel that you can start this season? Uh, I feel very confident. You know, I feel like I have just as much ability as, as any guy on the field. You know, and I feel like I came from a great program and, you know, I feel like I, it, I know what it takes to get to get the job done. And so I'm going to continue, you know, to go out there every day and just stay positive, work hard. I'm surrounded by great coaches, you know, great players as well, great veteran guys who are willing to, you know, luckily to help me out and, you know, take me under their wing, you know. And then it helps having a coach who's done it for 25 years, who coached some legend. I mean, Coach McGinnis has coached like Mike Singletary. You know, who's another um, supposedly undersized linebacker that had a great career. You know, he's coached many other, you know, great talents. So I'm excited to have him, you know, as a coach and to have, you know, guys like Will Witherspoon who's been in the league for nine years and, you know, the rest of the guys who, who have an infinite amount of experience. Mm -hmm. I'm in good hands. 
So that was a good segue into um, my next question. Now that you're at the NFL level, mm -hmm. what do you say to those people who doubted your size, who still doubt your size? Yeah. What do you have to say to them? Um, you know, really, I, I have nothing much to say to them. I, I do my talking on the field, you know, that's, I feel like that's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just let them talk, I let the reporters write stories about me being undersized, and I just keep on going out and doing what I love to do. I might not be as tall as everybody else, but hey, that's something I can't control, so I'm going to try to better the things that I can control. That's one thing, you know, coming into this whole deal, into the draft and all that, I didn't care. You know, if I was the last pick, I just wanted to come somewhere where I felt like I was needed, you know, where I felt like, you know, guys had confidence in me mm -hmm. and didn't care about my height. And since I've been here, you know, co the coaches have all just, you know, have had so much confidence in me and haven't, you know, said any, you know, of course there's always the jokes about me being uh, about my height, you know, I, I just laughed that off. But, you know, all in all, when we're on the field, you know, I can tell that they really trust me and, you know, being a rook, you know, that they really believe in my ability and, and I feel like that's, you know, it was a great reason why they brought me here. You know, they really saw, watched the film, you know, which mm -hmm. is the thing that matters the most. And look at that sheet, the sat sheet, and, and you know, the, my height and all that. They, they really just looked at that film and saw that I was a good player and tried to get me into a system where they knew I could thrive. In Nashville, Tennessee, Nancy Moose at Channel 2 Action News.